So, in February 2023, with 20 years sentence of child sex crimes, a Chicago judge sentenced Kelly to 20 years in prison following the 2022 trial, in which a jury he was found enticed minors for sex produce, produce child sexual imagery. However, the victory for the lawyer, singer's lawyers, the judge said that all but one of those years would be served at the time. At the same time, he is serving a previous three-year sentence. The judge would have would have dealt a, a health, heftier sentence if the Chicago trial had come first. Hello, welcome to the True Crime Lounge. If you're new here, hit that like button, comment, subscribe, comment something about, comment something about the case I'm going to talk about today. Ring that bell for notification and subscribe so you can get more videos like this. Alright. Today we are going to be talking about R. Kelly. That's right. The ma Why are we talking about R. Kelly? Well, if you've been living under a rock, then you probably don't know about all his extracurricular activities, I guess we'll say. But, <laughs> R. Kelly basically was born Robert Sylvester Kelly, but he's more commonly known as R. Kelly, on January 8, 18, 1967 in Chicago, Illinois. Um, he's an American singer, songwriter, producer, and multi-instrumentalist who had one of the best-selling rhythm and blues art he was one of the best-selling artists in the 1990s the early 21st century known for his gospel tinged vocal delivery and his highly sexualized lyrics throughout his career kelly faced various allegations of sexual abuse and in the 2020s, he was convicted of sex trafficking, racketeering, production of child pornography. Kelly was, Kelly was raised in public housing projects in Chicago, and he was taught to have a powerful sense of Christian faith by his mom. His singing style has been described as church-trained, and through faith, through faith, he has a recurring theme in his lyrics, such as his early singles of Sex Me from 1993. Um, he established establishing a cornability as the center of his music. The tension between, between the sacred and the profane, along with the contrast of a tough guy persona. And the tender vocals have been constrained to his career. On Kelly's debut album, Born in the 90s, that was released in 1992, he joined with the vocal group a public announcement to deliver a smooth, melodic, mel melodic signature, that's how you pronounce it, sorry guys, um, that was laced with hip-hop rhymes, so secretly, efforts achieved e ever greater success as Kelly's dominance in the R&B market translated into pop stardom. His inspiration, I Believe I Can Fly, and Who Has Not Sung That Song? And it was released in 1996, 27 years ago. <gasps> it was a massive hit. And it earned him three Grammy Awards. So, what does his backgrounds include? Well, they include acoustic guitar, side view strings, finger bird music. He has his, like, Bumping Grind that was released in 1994, You Remind Me of Something from 1995, and I'm Your Angel from 1998. He also has more songs that reached the top 40 of the Billboard singles opposed to any male solo artist in the 1990s. Pretty, in pretty impressive, but still his legacy guys went downhill. But so... The popularity of his latter, latter song, a duet with Celine Dion, contributed to the success of his album, R, which it, that was released in 1998, which sold more than 8 million copies in the U.S. alone. His personal life was dogged by controversy over being with the revelation that he has secretly read the singer Aaliyah in 1994, when she was only 15. The illegal marriage was annulled, and shortly thereafter, Kelly's 
troubles came to head in 2002 when authorities came into him with possession of videotape. This was first given to the Chicago Sun-Times by anonymous sourcing and this, that allegedly showed them having sex with underage girls. He was soon indicted on multiple charges re related to child pornography, though, as a result of a variety of circumstances, his trial was delayed for several years. So, over this long free trial pre-trial period, he continued to release albums, if anything, which grew more explicit. Though they also also included songs of uplift, despite the initial shock and backlash related to the criminal allegations. Chocolate Factory in 2003, which featured the Balancey Ignition remix. Happy People and You Saved Me from 2004 helped him maintain his status as one of the world's foremost R&B singers. He stretched further with Hip Opera, Trapped in the Closet, a music video series of the first five installments, which included a song cycle from his album TP3, Reloaded, which was released in 2005, and then more than a dozen, dozen followed on DVD in 2018, 2008. Kelly reigned in his salaciousness on the album's Love Letter in 2010 and Write Me Back in 2012, which was rooted primarily in the lush sound of 1960s and 70s soul music. However, he returned to more explicit materials wh where, um, with his 2013 album and 2015 album. The holiday album 12 Nights of Christmas appeared in 2016 during his solo recordings as he collaborated with Jay-Z on two albums. He also wrote and produced songs by numerous artists, including Michael Jackson, The Eiley Brothers, Solo Coaster, The Diary of Me, a memoir that was written by, with David Ritz that was published in 2012. So during this time, Kelly continued to face allegations of sexual abuse and misconduct, including claims that he ran a so-called sex cult of may grow in backlash of an outgrowth of the Me Too movement, the hashtag New R. Kelly movement was launched in 2017, seeking a boycott to his music. Two years later, the Lifetime channel aired the six-part documentary series of Survive and R. Kelly, which I saw that, and I do recommend you go and watch that. It was really good. Which examined the accusations against the singer. So, in February 2019, a video after the program was broadcast, the state of Illinois charged Kelly with 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual assault. He pled not guilty. In addition, he, the state's charges were subsequently foul. Can't talk for some reason. Um, he was also investigated by federal authorities in July 19, 2019. They charged him with various crimes. Kelly was taken into custody at the time, and he was denied bail on several occasions. So finally, in August of 2021, he went on trial for federal court in Brooklyn, facing charges involving racketeering and sex trafficking. The following month, he was convicted on all counts, and in 2022, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison that he went on a trial for in Chicago federal court over the sex tapes featuring the singer 14 year old with a 14 year old why did these parents again let their child go with him to begin with knowing what they know um in september he was convicted on various charges including the production of child pornography enticement of a minor however he was acquitted on several other counts notice Notably, obstruction of justice, his legal troubles in Illinois appeared at the end of July 2020, January 2023, when it was announced that Chicago's prosecutors were dropping charges against Kelly, noting his conviction that a claim with justice has been served. So for nearly two decades, he had faced allegations of sexual abuse, the accounts that went that started back in the 90s with many centering on the 
predatory pursuit of teenage girls. In 2022, he was jailed for 30 years being, after being found guilty on eight counts of sex trafficking and one count of racketeering on a New York court. Months later, he was convicted of child sexual abuse in the second federal trial in Chicago. The singer, whose real name, Robert Sylvester Kelly, is also due to is also due to face sexual misconduct charges in Minnesota. Kelly was himself the victim of child sex abuse and detailed a biography about how he was raised by a female family member and he was only eight years old. Here, so, I'm going to take a short break, then we're going to dive into the timeline of everything. Okay, before I get started with the timeline, I will note there might be some times I just have to pause and take a minute with some stuff that are triggering to me, um, but I pr I will try my best not to, but I'm, there are, gonna, like I said, times when I'm going to have to stop. So, to begin with our timeline, let's take it all the way back to 1994 when he marries Aaliyah. She, Kelly was actually 27 when he met a 15-year-old Aaliyah in a secret ceremony in Chicago. Vive magazine later discovered that Leo had lied about her age and went on the marriage certificate listing herself as 18. The marriage was annulled in 1995 in the former manager of Kelly. For Kelly testified at his trial that he bribed a government worker in 1994 to obtain a fake ID for Leah so the singers could marry. For the rest of her career, she, 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 Aaliyah always dodged the questions about the nature of her relationship, saying that when people ask me, I tell them, hey, don't believe all in the mess, she told one interviewer. We're close and people took it all the way, took it the wrong way. Kelly wrote and produced Aaliyah's debut album, calling it Ain't Jane Nothing But a Number. Kelly rarely spoke about Aaliyah after she died in the plane crash in 2001. She is not mentioned in his autobiography with author notes saying certain episodes contain could not be included for complicated reasons. So in a 2016 interview with GQ magazine, he described the relationship as best, best, best friends, but declined to comment on their marriage and saying, I will never have that conversation with anyone. I have respect for Aaliyah and her mother and her father who have asked me not to personally. So let's jump ahead a couple of years to 1996, where he is sued for emotional distress. Tiffany Hawkins sued R. Kelly for personal injuries and emotional distress. She suffered during a three-year relationship with the star. So in court documents, she said that she, she began having sex in to Kelly in 1991. She was 15, he was 24. The relationship ended when she turned 18. According to the Chicago Suns, Sun Times. Miss Hawkins saw a ten million damage but accepted a fraction of two hundred and fifty thousand when the case settled in nineteen ninety eight. Kelly spokeswoman said that she had no knowledge of the accusations. Kelly continued to be success to release successful songs and win major awards as accusations accumulated around him. So let's jump forward to 2001 when he gets sued by his intern, Tracy Sampson, who, accusing him of indecent as a sexual relationship with when she was 17. The woman, a former intern at Epic Records, said that she was treated as his personal sex object and cast aside. He often tried to control every aspect of her life, including who I was to see and who I, where I was to go. She said the case was settled at a court for an unsummed, undisclosed sum, according to the New York Post. So, let's jump ahead a year to April and May of 2002. With two more cases, where Kelly is sued by Patrice Jones, a Chicago woman who claimed to impreg he impregnated when she was underage. And that she was forced to have an abortion. Montina Woods also sued Kelly, alleging that he videotaped them having sex without her knowledge. 
The recording was allegedly circulated as a sex tape and sold by bootleggers under the title R. Kelly Triple X. The singer sell both cases out of court paying undisclosed sums in return for disclosed NDAs. So, in June 2002, he was charged over sexual abuse videos, with 21 counts of making se child sexual abuse involving various acts. Chicago police accused him of taping the acts and enticing minors to participate in them. All the charges related to one girl born in September 1984. His arrest stemmed from a video that was sent anonymously to the Chicago Sun-Times earlier that year. They passed it to police who verified the authenticity and was held from, from the FBI forensics. Kelly, who posted bail at $750,000, immediately denied charges in an interview with MTV and played not guilty in court. It took him six years for the case to come to trial, during which time he released his rightly successful Trapped in the Closet album, which was nominated for Image People by the NAACP, prompting widespread criticism. The jury eventually concluded that they could not prove that the girl on the tape was a minor, and Kelly was found not guilty of all counts. So, 2002-2004, arrest prompt further at charges. He was charged with for 12 counts of producing child sexual abuse images in Florida, where he was arrested at his holiday home. And these charges came later when police seized a camera during the arrest with allegedly contained images of him having sex with underage girls. The charges were dropped when a judge agreed with Kelly's defense team that the police lacked sufficient evidence to justify a search. In 2017, a long and de detailed BuzzFeed report accused R. Kelly of trapping six women in a sex cult. The article alleged that Kelly seduced young women and was approached to him during his time to help them with their music career, before taking control of their lives, dictating what they eat, how they dress, when they breathe, and how they sleep in sexual encounters that he had. So Kelly also confiscated the woman's mobile phone, the report said, barring contact with family and friends. The Allegations came from three former employees and the parents of several women who said their daughters had all but vanished. So in 2017-2018, victims approached the press with the reports, BuzzFeed's reports prompted for the allegations. Johanda Pace broke an NDA to speak about having sex with Kelly while she was underage. Another woman, Kitty Jones, claimed that the star starved her coerced her into sexual encounters with other women, physically abused her. Miss Pace will go on to testify against Kelly in his in the twenty twenty one trial. Miss Kitty along the uh, with other members of R. Kelly's inner circle also spoke to BBC. The documentary in March twenty eighteen of one former child friend and collaborator Lovell Jones said that Kelly asked him to scout women that looked young at parties and claimed that it was common knowledge that a singer preferred young girls. So in 2018, the hashtag Mute R. Kelly staff departures the court case. The hashtag Mute R. Kelly campaign lobbied um, lobby his record label RCA to serve her ties with the singer. They also targeted concert promoters, ticket sellers, and streaming services with Spotify, Apple Music, and Pandora, all agreeing to demote Kelly's song from their playlist. 
a decision that was later reversed. So around the time the star, the star's lawyer, publicist, and personal assistant all quit, although his attorney, Linda Minch, said her department was unrelated. It was unrelated to any allegations related to Mr. Kelly's social life. Kelly continued to perform live despite protests outside his shows and was filmed saying the campaign against him was too late. Only God can mute me, he said defiantly on a song called I Admit, Am I Supposed to Go to Jail or Lose My Career Because of Your Opinion? Meanwhile, the star was sued from a former partner who said he intentionally infected her with an STD. So let's jump to 2019 now, when the six-hour when the six-hour document docu series on Lifetime premiered, Surviving R. Kelly. So two weeks into the program, the broadcast was Kelly was dropped by his regular label. Planned concerts in the U.S. New Zealand was was canceled. In February, celebrity lawyer Michael Avenatti said that he obtained a video showing Kelly having sex with a 14-year-old girl. Weeks later, Kelly was charged with Chicago, charged in Chicago with 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual assault. He pled not guilty and gave a histrionic TV interview. I remember when this interview came out. Prosecutors later filed an additional 11 charges of sexual assault and abuse against a minor between 13 and 16. The charging documentary described the sex and oral with a minor by the use of force or threat of force. The accuser was thought to be one of many women featured in Survi Surviving R. Kelly, who said that she... She met the singer during a previous trial. So, let's jump to, 20, to July of that year with, this, with the sex trafficking charges. He appears in a hearing in, Layton, in the Layton Criminal Court building in Chicago, where, and where he is hit with two separate federal indictments in Illinois and in Brooklyn, combined with allegations depicted in an organized effort from the singer and his associates to recruit and transport underage girls over state lines were of legal sexual purposes including production of child sexual abuse images as well as conspiracy to obstruct justice by destroying evidence and bribing other witnesses so in august of 2019 prosecution charges with prosecutors in minnesota Filed prostitution against charges of R. Kelly, meaning he faced criminal cases in three states. He was accused of soliciting a teenager who asked him for his autograph in 2001. Kelly allegedly invited a 17 year old to his hotel room and offered her $200 to undress and dance for him. Kelly's lawyer said the charges were beyond absurd. So let's jump to 2020. Do we really have to do 2020? That was such a terrible year. But anyway, for the sake of the, today's video. So August of September of 2020, he was to prison assault. So toward the end of August, Kelly was attacked in his sleep by a fellow inmate in the Chicago Metro Correctional Center. What his lawyer said, called for immediate release saying, the government cannot ensure his safety. However, they can request, along with numerous attempts to get Kelly released on bail, it was denied. So, August of 2021, in the pretrial hearing before Kelly's trial, the U.S. District Judge Anne M. Donnelly made a series of rulings to narrow down what evidence could be shown to the jurors. During the hearing, she asked one of the St. Gers lawyers, where they denied the star had sexual relations with Aaliyah while she was underage. According to the Associate Press, Thomas A. Farinella let a deep sigh and responded, no. So, from August to September of 2021 with the trial and the guilty verdict, 
The trial began August 18th in New York. R. Kelly were a lot of so were a lot of key moments. So on September 27th, following two days of deliberation, the jury found R. Kelly guilty of all counts. Gloria Alvred, a lawyer who represented several victims, told, I've been practicing law, law for 47 years. During this time, I pursued many sexual predators who have counted committed crimes against women and children. Of all, of all the predators that I have pursued, R Mr. Kelly was the worst. So in November 2021, during the, with the witness intimidation, a man was sentenced to eight years in prison after intimidating a witness before R. Kelly's New York trial. So in 2020, Michael Williams set fire to a car belonging to a father of a witness who was due to testify in order to prevent the victim witness from continuing to cooperate, according to the statement. Williams attempted to use violence and intimidation to divert the course of to prevent victims' voice from being heard, they said. If he's innocent, you'll have to go to all these extremes. But he's not innocent. This is why you're jumping to all these extremes. So in June 2022, in his New York sentencing, Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison for using the celebrity status of sexually abu sexual abuse, sexually abused children and women. So the U.S. District Judge Ann Donnelly said that the singer had an indifference to human suffering and he used sex as a weapon, forcing his forcing his children to do unspeakable things while adding some with sexual with STDs. You thought that love was enslavement and violence, she said. Some of the women who were abused by the singer described how he had destroyed their lives as they addressed him before the court. Lawyers for Kelly said he would appeal. So August 2022, new federal charges in Chicago, as he had a dark and hidden side to the public rarely saw during his career, said an opening of one of his federal trials. The singer was on trial in his hometown of Chicago for child pornography, obstruction of justice, and other charges. So a woman at the heart of the trial testified that the R&B singer was had her hundreds of times before she was 18. The 37 year old woman known as Jane said improper contact with Kelly when she was 13 and his lawyers insisted she he was not a monster and, and deserved a fair trial. So in September 2022 not a guilty verdict. Surprise surprise. The disgraced star was found guilty of child sexual abuse in his second federal trial. The jury convicted six out of 13 counts, including three of the child pornography after the four week case. He was acquitted of a charge in conspiring to obstruct justice and was related to the child pornography trial. 2008 child pornography trial. So in November 2022, his manager pled guilty of threatening a victim. So his former manager was sentenced to 20 months in prison for stalking and harassing the singer's victims. Donald Russell pled guilty in July to using threats and intimidation silencing one of the women Kelly abused. Using an alias, he published explicit photos of her in an attempt to stop her from testifying against his trial. So, in January, let's jump ahead to this year, back in January, where some of the charges dropped as justice is served. So, as a Chicago prosecutor said, she was dropping sexual abuse charges and assault dating back to 1998 against Kelly, who was already facing a decade in prison. So, Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox said her in her office will no longer be pursuing these indictments. Sometimes justice served even when there is no conviction. So, so in February 2023, with 20 years sentence of child sex crimes, a Chicago judge sentenced Kelly to 20 years in prison, 
following the 2022 trial, in which a jury he was found enticed minors to sex produce, produce child sexual imagery. However, the victory for the lawyer, singer's lawyers, the judge said that all but one of those years would be served at the time. At the same time, he is serving a previous thirty-year sentence. The judge would have would have dealt a, a he heftier sentence if the Chicago trial had come first. That is it for today's episode. I will see y'all next time. Let me know if what I should talk about next. Um, what details shock you? What I missed out on? Um, I am curious. So, I'll see y'all next time.